morning. Flo Lloyd Hughes is with us. She's a football broadcaster and journalist, and we're talking about the uh, WSL. Uh, Flo, how are you getting on? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. So we're three weeks, three matches in uh, to the start of the season, and we just wanted to kind of see exactly how things were going. This was the most hyped um, competition that we've seen. It's coming off the back of a, an intense period of um, focus over the last 18 months on the league and a huge investment in terms of money and resources and um, an influx of some of the best players in the world. So have the actual matches themselves lived up to the level of expectation that people would have had about them? Yeah, definitely. I think when you look at a team like Arsenal and for Irish Irish interest, you've got Katie McCabe there, who's a, a, a big national team player. They've hit the ground running. They've had some big entertaining matches, fantastic goals, not just in the league, but also the FA Cup. Yesterday, for Man United, we saw our first glimpses of Kristen Press and Tobin Heath, who have joined from the US, big players in the US women's national team. We saw our first glimpses, glimpses of them, and they look like they want to impress, and they're going to be really entertaining in this league. We're yet to see Alex Morgan, which perhaps is the only disappointment so far. She's coming back off being out of action for a fair amount of time due to having a baby and she's still getting up to match fitness. So perhaps that's the only disappointment is we're yet to see a glimpse of her and, and why she's such a, a big player. Do we know how long she is away uh, from playing Flo? Well, a lot of people were hoping that yesterday she was going to be making her first start, but she didn't even travel with the team to Manchester. And I think part of that is also having a young child and she has to, I think, make decisions based on where she's traveling. She's only in the country with her mother-in-law, which I think is quite a funny one to move to a new country and just bring your mother-in-law with you. I can imagine it's a bit of an interesting household there, but she, I think she's making some decisions based on that. And if she's only going to be a substitute, I don't think she's going to travel for those long away games. So by the looks of things, perhaps next weekend might be a, a, a first substitute appearance it seems like she is some way off starting still and she's still trying to get to match fitness but Spurs could do with the support so I think as soon as they can they want to get her on the pitch. Uh, how are they positioned in terms of actually making a, a title challenge and how much will her addition be rocket fuel to that challenge? So for Spurs that they're, they're some way off challenging mm. for the title they are very much the the sort of newcomers in the in the top division it's a bit of a a building process i think for them they have only been in the wsl now this is only their second season um after being promoted to the championship they have the same coaches that they've had for a very long time and they're not really splashing the cash like some of the other teams who have a big Premier League men's team um, uh, uh, as a parent club. They're trying to be a bit more stable. They've got a nice group of, of young players, but this season they've added a bit more of experience in big names. They've brought in Alana Kennedy from Australia, who's got tons of international experience, and now they've brought Alex Morgan. So this is a bit of a building year for them. It hasn't been a great start to the season, to be honest. They got beaten 4-1 by City yesterday. They've got one point on the board and they have struggled to score goals and it was the same last season. So that's what they'll be hoping for from Alex Morgan is to just start scoring goals. Yesterday, they scored their first goal that was scored by a player on their team. Before that, they'd only had an own goal to their name. So it's really important that they start scoring goals and then they can look at trying to push up because it hasn't been a great start to the season for them. It's very unusual that we can actually speak about an individual possibly being bigger than a club. Like I, I saw the, the figures doing around that Alex Morgan has more Instagram followers than Tottenham Hotspur in general. Like that, that comes with a, a whole heap of pressure. But the, the question I would have is, do you think that there's going to be future investment to ensure that she has the, the parts around her to challenge next season or the season after? Well, it's an interesting one because how long she's going to be here is still unclear. Um, there's some reports that she's only going to be here until the end of the year. And then there's other reports that she's going to be here till the end of the season. From my understanding, it's a bit of both. Apparently, she can decide if she wants to stay until the end of the season. It's only a loan from her parent club in Orlando. So her manager in Orlando is saying that she's going to come back in January. But... Um, apparently her managers and Spurs uh, seem to think that she's going to be here for the whole season. So I think it's sort of up to her, depending how things go. So in that sense, I think expecting her to transform a football club is a lot of pressure because she's only here on a temporary basis. And in that sense, yes, it's a massive move, but 
it's going to take her a bit of time for her to get up to match fitness. And if she does stay only till the end of the year, then how much impact can she really have in a short space of time? But if she stays till the end of the season and she can start playing soon, then she could have a real impact on this league and hopefully impact on the club as well. And it will kickstart some future investment. But a lot of this for the US players about is about the Olympic Games. It's about making the team for the Olympic Games. So beyond that, I'm not sure if she'll want to come back again after this season. I, I guess it depends how she does and if she enjoys being in London as well. What about the Americans who are at City? Are they in it for a slightly longer haul or is everybody fairly much in the same boat where this is a very specific get match fitness, stay as fit as you can, get to as high a level as you possibly can and then completely reassess everything after the Olympics? <laughs> It's a bit of that, really. I think for some players, they will decide whether or not they'll go back to the States after the season. I think hopefully we will see people like Sam Mewis, who signed for City, and maybe Rose Lavelle stay a little bit longer. But for, for most of them, it was a case of, if I'm going to make the Olympic squad, I need to be playing top quality football. And if I'm going to be fit as well to perform at the Olympics, I need to be playing good, playing good football. And that was a big motivator because of the situation in the States with COVID. And also what they've had now with the States is they're playing sort of glorified friendlies and, and the quality isn't as good because lots of top players are deciding not to play because of the COVID situation. So this was a, a kind of great scenario for everyone, really, um, to be able to get the best players over in the WSL. They get to play, the clubs get them for a bit. But because of the way the contract system works in the States, where you're sort of owned by the federation, it's quite difficult then to work out long-term opportunities because you get traded, um, like we see in a lot of US sports. You're constantly traded between teams, so the, they sort of have your rights, as it were. So it's hard to know beyond this season what the landscape will look like, but it'd be fantastic if they will stay after the Olympics and come back and hopefully we will see some of them make that call. And is there still a consensus that the best club football is played in America? It, all things being equal, say after the Olympic Games, fingers crossed we have a vaccine, would the assumption be that the best quality football on a week-to-week -week basis is still in America or is this the window of opportunity for the league in England to establish itself as the, the league that has the best players in the world in it? I think this is a, definitely a window of opportunity. I think up until this point, America had been leading the way because mm, a lot of the best players in the world had been based there, and, and you know that's really the U.S. team in itself. But I think, you know, Sam Kerr had played majority of her football in the U.S. and Australia, and now she's decided to move here full time for now, anyway. And I think that is a big commitment to make and a big statement to make. Pernella Harder as well, moving over, one of the best players in the world. So I think, yeah, I think there's a real window of opportunity. And after this season, it'll be interesting to see what happens and how the WSL does measure up against the NWSL because this season has been a bit of a write-off for them. They had a one-off tournament, but now they've got these weird regional friendly situations. So this is a huge opportunity for the WSL to put itself on the map. And also most, you know, most people in the world can watch the league for free as well. So it's a huge opportunity to get eyes on it and to create some fans as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point about the terrestrial TV and all of a sudden those terrestrial TV broadcasters are going to have loads of airtime to fill because they can no longer afford the rights for uh, other sports that they traditionally would have covered three or four decades ago. So I definitely feel like there's, um, there's a, a wave to be surfed here. You mentioned um, Katie McKay and Arsenal. I think she's been pressed into slightly emergency service at um, fullback because of injuries, even though she obviously would have played a lot of fullback in the past. I'm not sure what that means for her future, uh, but Arsenal are going well. Do they have the strength and depth at the moment to um, compete? and to win the title this year? I think depth is an issue for Arsenal and it's something that their manager, Joe Montero, hates being asked about, but is a reality of the situation. They've got such a fantastic core group who've played together for a very long time, who know each other very well, who also play on national sides together and, and have played together for, for years. That's a massive plus point, but at the same time, when they do suffer injuries or they have fatigue in the squad, things can unravel quite quickly. And we saw that a couple of years ago when they had so many injuries, it was so hard for them to, to play catch up. And in, and in a small league like the WSL, if you lose one game against the title challengers like City and Chelsea, you put yourself so far back that, you know, those can be title deciders quite early on in the season. So it, it's so important that 
they maintain this momentum and be able to bring it for those big games rather than potentially give it all to be a, a team 9-0 and then perhaps you know you're you're exhausted or you get some injuries for that game and then you can't compete in the games that really matter so that that's the risk for arsenal but in the moment yesterday they went a goal down and then they they brought it back in the end to win 3-1 so that fight and that determination will stand them in good stead when when you know the fixture list gets tougher floyd good stuff thanks a million floyd good stuff thanks a million for joining us this morning thank you guys